Teresa, thank you for your gifts. Let's give them a little thanks. Very nice. That's so much stuff going on in this service. I forgot to do that. So thank you guys for excellent using your gifts. Good to see everybody. Uh, God's blessings and, and peace as we gather in his name. Um, quite a few things uh, went on already uh, this morning. Um, at the end of early service, we did just a little um, honoring of a longtime member here, at Carol Ritz. Um, she has played uh, the organ here in church for over 60 years, and she is officially retired, um, but still very much still involved with, with other things. And I thought it was uh, very nice, uh, for, uh, especially looking back all the work she's done with the LWML over the years, uh, to, to have it on this day. Today is uh, Luther Women's Missionary League Sunday, and it's always good um, to, to highlight uh, both the theme that they have every year and then also uh, the work uh, that the LWML does, uh, both around St. Paul and this community and to the, to the ends of the earth. So um, if you haven't gotten involved uh, with them before, it's not just a women's group, right? Uh, everybody can be involved in, in the collection of mites. Um, I'll talk about that a little more. I've talked about it probably every year since I've been here. Um, one of the uh, best things, I think, our, uh, our Lutheran Church Missouri Synod has that just makes an uh, incredible impact all over the globe. Um, part of that, uh, that the LWM in our congregation does every year is the Christmas Marketplace. Um, we, uh, we take door offering, and then we get gift cards, and then we, we take them down to the Fort Wayne Sem, um, and uh, they go towards uh, gifts uh, for the seminary families. And so uh, every year we do that. So as you leave today, if you'd like to give a, 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 a door offering for that, uh, Abby will have a basket back there. The other thing is there's mic boxes back there. If you've never gotten involved with mic giving, what an easy way uh, to support the worldwide missions, uh, both in Michigan and end of the earth. So excellent. Um, poinsettia order, uh, November 18th is the deadline. Um, so if you'd like to sponsor one uh, for the uh, poinsettia tree, uh, remember that last couple of years? It kind of all gathers around the cross, and it's a beautiful, beautiful thing. Um, but we need poinsettias, so uh, please order uh, either a memory or an honor of, and get that in by, by November 18th, okay? Um, next week, we have another uh, special Sunday, uh, the Observance of Veterans Day, um, and a uh, little bit of flavored service. There'll be time that that stand, and a little prayer for our, our military in the midst of service, too. We're going to have a breakfast honoring our, our vets. Um, please sign up for it so we got an idea of, of how much food to make. We're, we're, we're going to be a, a lot less this year, um, just people, you know, not ready for that. But for the breakfast, um, all of you will be, you'll be asked what you want, right? And, and it will be served, right? There will be, you know, gloves and things. And, uh, and then we'll have the table spaced out, no more than four uh, to a table. I know families that might have to split up, but let's, uh, families can, if you're part of the same household, grab the same table, we can, that's no problem. Um, and uh, then at 10.30, uh, we have the, the playful ceremony um, where we, uh, we honor the vets, um, especially uh, those who are now in the church triumphant. We can add uh, Bob Marks' name to that list this year, and, and uh, pi Big Pipers will be there, uh, the Rifle Squad will be there, the Bugler will be there, I'll be there. And the bell ringer will be there. So uh, if you've never joined us for that, um, looks like a better Sunday next week. The last couple we've been out there in snow. Remember, remember, especially last year, my I was ankle deep out there, um, and it uh, looks like a, a good a good weather for next Sunday. So um, there we go. And if you if you know a vet um, that may be a little isolated, um, that could church. I mean, bring them. You know, and. Uh, uh, you know, we just want to honor, honor those who have served like we do every year, okay? Um, I'm disappointed in, in our Euchre turnout, all right? I'm not disappointed in it overall. We are being outnumbered by guests and visitors to Euchre on, on our Saturday night. So challenge, I mean, that's great, but, but all they do is talk to me about stuff, right? I want them to meet you guys and get a flavor, I mean... I go there for relaxation and fun, and I don't want to just sit and talk about church all day, but I do. Um, and you can do that too, so if you have any, any inclination to play some euchre, rookies to season pro, 7 o'clock Saturday night, bring a little snack to share, 
and we just we, if we have too many people, we'll go in the gym, spread out, um, but uh, you know, uh, join us, okay? Um, I think that is all I have. I'm sure there's more. All right. With that, let's stand. Let's say hi to one another. Do a little uh, forearm cross, whatever you want to do. Excellent. Congratulations, Jennifer. I'm going to do children's message right here. Okay. Sure. Mark? Okay. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Give ear, O shepherd of Israel, you who lead Joseph like a flock. You who are enthroned upon the cherubim, shine forth. Turn again, O God, hosts. Look down from heaven and see. Have regard for this vine, the stock that your right hand planted. Restore us, O God hosts. Let your face shine that we may be saved. Please be seated for our first hand. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all our unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you with thought, word, and deed. By what we have done, and by what we have left undone, we have not fully lived as your kingdom people. We have not brought forth the fruits of righteousness as we ought. We justly deserve your presence and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will, walk in your ways, and bear kingdom fruit to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his only Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all of your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. 
us pray. Gracious God, you gave your Son into the hands of sinful men who killed him. Forgive us when we reject your unfailing love and grant us the fullness of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Christ. 
Indeed, I count everything as loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. For his sake I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish, in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him. Not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from, from God that depends on faith, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection, and may share his sufferings, becoming like him in his death, that by any means possible I may obtain the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already obtained this, or I am already perfect, but I press on to make it my own, because Christ Jesus had made me his own. Brothers, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but one thing I do, forgetting what lies ahead and straining forward to what lies er, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The gospel is recorded in Matthew chapter 21, verses 33 to 46. Jesus tells the parable of the tenants in the vineyard. Please stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel. Jesus said, Hear another parable. There was a master of a house who planted a vineyard and put a fence around it and dug a wine press in it and built a tower and leased it to tenants and went into another country. When the season for fruit drew near, he sent his servants to the tenants to get his fruit. And the tenants took his servants and beat one, killed another, and stoned another. Again, he sent other servants, more than the first, and they did the same to them. Finally, he sent his son to them, saying, They will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to themselves, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him and have his inheritance. And they took him and threw him out of the vineyard and killed him. When therefore the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to these tenants? They said to him, He will put those wretches to a miserable death, and let out the vineyard to other tenants, who will give him the fruits in their seasons. Jesus said to them, Have you never read in the scriptures, The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone? This was the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. Therefore I tell you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people producing its fruits. And the one who falls on this stone will be broken to pieces, and when it falls on anyone, it will crush him. When the chief priests and the Pharisees heard his parables, they perceived that he was speaking about them. And although they were seeking to arrest him, they feared the crowds, because they held him to be a prophet. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Probably 
everything's known for hops and grapes, you know. <laughs> and that's all good. That's all good. Um, but today our theme is producing kingdom fruit, right? And what do you do with an apple? Uh, you, you take those seeds, right? You plant them in the ground, and then they produce trees, right? And then eventually more apples. Um, and that, that's, that's kind of neat. But God's people, one of the reasons we have the church is to produce what is called kingdom fruit, right? Now, we're really happy that we can come to church, we can, we can hear God's word, we can learn it, we can go to Sunday school, we can great, do some great stuff, know some great people, have the support, the fellowship with that we have. But the biggest reason God leaves his church where it's at is that more people need to know about Jesus. Christ isn't coming back yet because more people need to hear the message of the gospel. And the way that is done is by Christians producing kingdom fruit. Now, what do you think, Jason? We go and bury you in the ground and see if the tree grows? That's not producing kingdom fruit, right? <laughs> not at all, right? And every time we, we hear God's word, we realize that we have the full and the complete forgiveness of our sins, life now and life after, everlasting, despite right, of, of our works, right? It doesn't depend on our works. It's gift from God. But then God works through us to do His work, to produce kingdom fruit. So we're all like little trees out there, showing mercy, helping where we can, giving our time, our talent, our treasure, and the temple God has given us in service to our King to produce kingdom fruits. And here, do you believe me? That's kingdom fruits, right there. A gigantic box with some change in it. Now, my boxes are kind of little, right? And you can pick one up on the way out. But you realize that in our Michigan district, we have a little over 330 congregations, right? All kinds of people like us putting our change in our mic box, collecting together and supporting, I forget the figure, anyone got that sheet? Uh, 250 some thousand dollars of mission projects, right? Overall in our city, we've got almost 6,000 congregations, people like you and me with mic boxes, putting our mics in, and they produce kingdom fruit to the tune of over $2 million every two years. That's every two years. And it goes on and on and on. All of these projects. And see, that's what God does. God doesn't need our good works, do it right. But our neighbor does. And Michael, who's our neighbor? Everybody. Even who? I'll have to put it in the right. Even people who are jerks to us. I, I wanted to say something else, but I stopped myself the conversation. Even the people that may hate us, hate what we stand for. Hate that we stand on God's word so firm. They, they might have some other God that they made up God. That they, they may hate us, but we're still our, our neighbor. And we're still care, caring for them. And we still have mercy and help, right? And so that's what it means to produce kingdom fruit. And God is doing that in our congregation. And I'll challenge all of you again. Keep on producing kingdom fruit. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for all the blessings you give us. You give us so much, Lord, for our bodies and for our souls that we have more to give. And Lord, continue to work in us to produce fruit for your kingdom so that other people will have their needs met, have quilts and have food and have fresh water, but then at the same time, learn of Jesus and learn of his grace and mercy. Bless all our efforts of our Lutheran Women's Missionary League here at St. Paul and throughout our entire city and throughout the world. Lord, may we be known by our good works, by our mercy, by our kingdom fruit. In Jesus' name we pray. And all that children said. Amen. 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 And you're enjoying your apples. Very good. Let's sing our next hymn.
Heavenly Father, and from our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The text I want to preach on is the Matthew 21 verses, the uh, parable of the tenants in the vineyard. A disturbing verse that we heard, verse 43. Therefore I tell you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people producing its fruits. Brothers and sisters in Christ. When you think of fruit, fill in the blank. Hawaii is known for pineapples. Florida is known for oranges. Georgia is known for peaches. Tennessee is known for whiskey. Oh! Who said that? Yeah, uh, I, I, that was my joke in early service that you blew it. Yeah. What's the fruit in Tennessee? It's whiskey. Yes, yes. Um, but I love fruit, right? And it's amazing that all over this nation, states, many of them, have what they call their state fruits. And so people start saying, ah, that state is known for producing pineapples, oranges, apples, whatever it is. Oh, would it be nice for people to think of the Christian church and say, look at all that that church produces. Look at all that they do. I've had some pretty sarcastic moments when I get frustrated with doing good things for others as the church. And I say, let's take a strike. Let's take one day off the calendar and say, every single Christian across this entire world, don't do anything for anybody else on this day. And let's see if anybody notices. That would happen. There'd be a whole lot of work that's not done in this world. Mercy work. Work that comes from our guts. That we want to do. That we have to do. It's always been that way. That the church, their mission is to reach out and meet the needs of those who need it. And at the same time, tell them why. That we have the love, the mercy and the grace and the forgiveness of Jesus Christ, and we can't but help to help, right? And there's no better group, I think, in our Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod, than the Lutheran Women's Missionary League, that it is so terribly easy to be part of producing kingdom fruit. All you got to do, folks, is go through your thing, those little containers in your car, right? If you're like me, you get changed and you have a hot spot in your car that you dump it in, right? Or through your desk drawers or your couches, right? And be part of the work of mice. Just think of how they have it. Well, it should get our attention if we look at our lives and we go, I'm not part of this process, right? Time, talent, treasure, temple. How am I actually serving? Am I producing kingdom fruits? And that can catch your attention. Because if we're not producing kingdom fruit, or there's some fruit that you're holding back from the Lord, and saying, it's mine, I don't need to help anybody else. I don't need to be a part of the mission of the church. Listen to what Jesus says. He's going to take it away from you, and he's going to give it, the people producing fruits. Actually, there's an even scarier one that Jesus says. If the tree does not produce fruit, what do you do? You cut that sucker down and burn it. And then hopefully it's going to produce some fruit. Did you ever see that? You cut a tree down, right? That irritating tree that's too close to your garage. And you cut it down and then you forget to tear up the stump. And then, oh, how about it? A shoot grows out of the stump. Right? Yeah. See, that's the Lord's hope. That cutting you down, your attention is down, your soul is awakened, and you bear fruit for the kingdom. Well, let's look at this at the context of this, of this account in Matthew 21. So we get a little bit of a better idea of why Jesus says this and exactly who he's saying it to. It was the chief priests and the elders of the people. It was either Monday or Tuesday of Holy Week. And they were in the mode 
of trying to trip Jesus up. And if we go backwards to verse 24 or 23, um, they come to him and they ask Jesus, by what authority are you doing these things and who gave you this authority? And in a masterful way, Jesus throws the question back at them. And he says, guys, let me ask you this question. And if you tell me the answer, then I also will tell you by what authority I do these things. And he says, the baptism of John, from where did it come from? From God or from man? And then the leaders of Israel, the leaders of the religious temple life of Israel, they get in a little huddle and they go, hmm, hmm. If we say from God, then the problem is we're not following John or Jesus. And if we say from man, then all these people who are following Jesus are going to get ticked off and we're going to lose our place. So either way, we're in trouble. So they couldn't answer the question. We do not know, is what they answered. And he said to them, neither will I tell you by what authority I do these things. And then in Jesus' masterful way, he tells them anyway. Guess that? He says, I'm not going to tell you, but then he tells them in parable. And it's the parable of the tenants in the vineyard. And it's very simple. I'm not going to read through it. Give you the Cliff Notes version, the Pastor Grant Quick version. So the, the, the owner of the vineyard makes a vineyard, right? And the whole point is to produce grapes, right? And so the, the people, the tenants are there taking care of it. And then the owner comes for the fruit. I've come for my fruit. And they don't have it. So he sends his servant. What do they do to him? Beat him and throw him out. Then he sends another servant. Same deal. Finally, the tenants of the vineyard sends his own son. And what happens to the son? They kill him. They kill him. And then they take over the vineyard. And suddenly Jesus says, basically, this is what you guys have done. You've taken over the Lord, Lord's vineyard. The poor, the destitute. Those who need help are not being cared for. All you're doing is lying in your own pockets with the proceeds of the temple. And it's time for a reckoning. And he says, Therefore I tell you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people producing its fruits. And then one verse later, When the chief priests and the Pharisees heard this parable, they perceived that he was speaking about him and about them. And they wanted to seize him immediately, but knew they couldn't. They had to do it clandestinely, secretly, and they do. They get Judas at a price, and they capture Jesus Thursday night in the garden, takes him before Rome, crucified, dead, buried, and then resurrected on the third day. The temple, the kingdom, the vineyard would be taken away from these guys in 70 AD. When it was leveled to the ground. And who did God give the vineyard to? He gave it to his church. He gave it to those who confess Jesus Christ as Lord and as Savior. And it's our task then to bear fruit in his kingdom. In Romans 7, we heard Paul write this. Likewise, my brother, you also have died to the law through the body of Christ. So that you may belong to another, to him who has been raised from the dead, in order that we bear fruit for God. Paul doesn't connect bearing fruit for the kingdom to the law. He says it's not an obligation. It's not a duty. It's not a have to or a got to. What Paul says is we get to do it because we have Christ. It's gospel motivated fruit production. Coming from our good natures. Coming from our saintly side. So that others may know. Others may have. Others may live and survive. John 15. Jesus said it himself. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him. He it is that bears much fruit. I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit. God empowers us. Through his word, through his sacrament, 
to the fellowship of the church, to the mutual admiration of the brethren. And he does so so that we accomplish something in our communities and in this world. Paul said in Colossians 1, We walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to Him, bearing fruit in every good work. I say it so often. God does not need our good works, but our neighbor does. And our neighbor is anybody who needs God's love. And for those to whom the kingdom has been given, it is fruit production season, folks. This is what kingdom people do. By God's grace, this is what the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod has done through the LWML now for more than half a century. The LWML focuses on fruit production. And if you take that little handout that's in the bulletin, half sheet like that, pictures on the front, I would ask if you got a little extra time today, halftime the Lions game or whatever, um, go on the web, go to lwml.org and look at some of these projects. $2.1 million in two years. All these international product, projects. And just take a look at what they're doing. Fresh water in Kenya. Can you imagine not having fresh water? No. Educational opportunities. Helping at-risk young women. Medical missions in Guatemala. All these amazing things. And the thing I've always enjoyed about El Dorinal is that they have this Community, right? Region, and the ends of the earth. They're, all three are in focus. All this work, all this mission, all this love and mercy. Flip over to back, and this is just our Michigan district. That was, was close. $251,000 in mission grants. In two years, just from our Michigan congregations, and look at some of these. The ones I really want to focus on is the areas in Michigan that really need some help. Flint, right, with all their problems. Inner city Detroit with every new thing that's going on. X2 Enterprises is funded by our LWML, and we send people in there to bring help and healing and hope. How about Pontiac, right? Since that Silver Dome crashed and a few companies left, Pontiac is just in horrible condition. And right there in the middle of it is St. Paul Lutheran Church and the Community Center. Doing meals, handing out clothing, and it comes, the funding, the good portion of it comes from the Lutheran Women's Missionary League. I hope you get the point. And I hope you say, give me a mic box. Help me do my part. From churches to communities to the world. Lutheran women in mission are known for gathering mites and funding worldwide mission. That's what they're known for. Their hands-on labor expand from congregation to community to around the world. The LWML is a blessing to many. It's kingdom people producing kingdom fruit. It fits well with their purpose. And folks, that's also our mission here at St. Paul. And during these months of this COVID stuff, you have risen to the occasion. You have provided and done work that we've never done before. Because someone told you there's a need. Probably me. And then you responded. In the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew 7, Jesus said, Every healthy tree bears good fruit. As followers of Jesus Christ, God has made us healthy, body and soul, in Jesus. We are in the right place, namely where God has already planted you. You're in his kingdom. You're in a community. And we're in the right season. Every season is fruit-producing season. Well, kingdom people, produce kingdom fruit. Bear forth the fruits of repentance. Bear forth the fruits of faith. Bear forth the fruits of the works of faith. Go make disciples. And may the kingdom of God be recognized by our fruits. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And in place of uh, the creed today, uh, let's stand. And uh, every other meeting I've ever been to has.
as pastor, as circuit counselor, as district counselor, every meeting is started with this pledge. Perfect gratitude for the Savior's dying love and his love for our gift of redemption. We dedicate ourselves to him with all that we are and have, and in obedience to his call for workers in the harvest fields, we pledge in our willing service wherever and whenever he has need of us. We consecrate to our Savior our hands to work for him, our feet to go on his errands, our voice to sing his praises. Our lips to proclaim his redeeming love, our silver and our gold to extend his kingdom, our will to do his will, and every power of our life to the great task of bringing the lost and the erring into eternal fellowship with him. Amen. And as our offerings are coming forward, let's give God the glory by singing the gospel. Thank you. Uh, we pray, Lord, that she can uh, rebound, 
uh, that she can snap out of this funk that she's in, that she can turn her eyes towards you and with her family around her uh, see that life continues, Lord. Bless her in body and soul and in spirit. Father, you only are able to give us health and wholeness and life. Lord, in your mercy. And Lord, grant us to repentance and the forgiveness of our sins. Give us faith and life and salvation this day and every day of our life. As your church here at St. Paul, continue to bind us into a unified fellowship with your son Jesus. Continue to make us to grow in mutual love. Bless all that we do in your name so that we bear fruit for the kingdom. And continue to bless and strengthen and inspire the ladies of our Lutheran Women's Missionary League as they continue to serve you with joy. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. And Father, finally, we ask that you hear our private prayers and our silent petitions, and then answer them according to your good and your gracious will. Into your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all for whom we pray. Trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who has also taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, you have filled us with your word, with your Holy Spirit, and have strengthened, us, strengthened our faith in you. Keep us as your kingdom people throughout our days, that we may bear fruit in keeping with repentance, till that day when we celebrate the feast of the Lamb of kingdom, which has no end. We pray through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord who lives and reigns with you, and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen.